Hello and welcome to the next part of Church Society's summer sermon series in the book of Ephesians. Uh, my name's Reverend Andrew Towner and I serve up in Carlisle where I chair the Board of Education for the Diocese and I'm also chair of Church Society Council. So it's my privilege to preach Ephesians 5 for us now. Let's pray as we start. Our loving Heavenly Father, we ask that you open my mouth to speak faithfully your words and open our hearts and minds to love them and to live them out for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. It's very important at the start of Ephesians chapter 5 to understand that this is not a passage telling us that if we do certain things, we will get to heaven. This is a passage all about how those who know God's love for them in Jesus Christ seek to live in response to him and that love. Uh, the couple of verses just before today's reading make that very clear. Chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Follow God's example therefore as dearly loved children and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So those who know God's love are called as loved children to follow God's example. Those who have been loved by Christ as he gave himself on the cross as the good shepherd laying down his life for his sheep are called to live in response to that shepherd's wonderful love. For any of us thinking about this this morning who perhaps wouldn't want to call ourselves Christians, it's an interesting passage to listen into. Does the love of God change anything? Does it make a difference believing what Christians believe? Have a think, have a listen as we work through these verses together. Those of us listening in as Christians will know that it's on the basis of being loved, being saved, being children, that we're called to live differently. We Christians don't live nervously, hoping that our loving Heavenly Father loves us. But knowing his love for sure, we live confidently. And Paul details some of the ways we live differently in verses 3 to 21 of Ephesians chapter 5. I love verse 1 because if you've been around the workplace for any length of time you've seen people who have been taught by other people and you've seen them take on their uh, habits. So when it says follow God's example verse 1 or be imitators of God what we're really talking about is something that you and I see all the time. We see people learn by imitating others. You see it in children you see it in churches, you see it in the workplace, you see it in every sphere of life. So what would it look like to imitate God? Three little things in our passage today. It looks like partnering well, it looks like planting carefully, and it looks like planning wisely. Those are all concepts we get straight in the text. So partnering well, verses three to seven, look at verse seven, that's where you get the partner language. It says, do not be partners with certain people. Verses three to seven say, as loved children who've been made part of God's family, it's royal children, royal manners. That's what Queen Elizabeth was taught when she was growing up. Royal children, royal manners. So verse three, not even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because those are improper for God's holy people nor obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but instead thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, that person is an idolater, has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ with God. The list expresses the idolatry of the heart. 
An idol in the Bible is not primarily something made of gold or stone that is physically bowed down to. No, an idol is something other than God that people live for. To have an idol in our hearts is to not let God be God of a certain part of our lives because we're prioritizing something else and that something else is an idol. So not committing to church because we're prioritizing our income or our holidays, it's an expression of money or pleasure being an idol. So an idol is anything that trumps God's law, God's law in our lives. Sexual immorality here, that means any sexual activity outside lifelong monogamous heterosexual marriage, any sexual activity at all. The impurity word is a much broader one, which includes sexual, but also riotous living, as we might say. And greed, of course, uh, greed, of course is talking about uncontrolled appetites. So greed says, I want that. Sexual immorality says, I want that, pleasure, without that commitment. And impurity says, I want that, and that, and that, and that. And once you articulate it like that, it's very clear who's at the center of that sort of a worldview. That worldview is centered around me, my wants, not God, and his law, not my loving Heavenly Father, and learning to imitate him. What can transform you and I in these areas? Simple, verse four, it's thanksgiving. I wonder if you take time in your day to give thanks. I was taught at the end of the day to kneel by my bed and to give thanks. Now I've given up the kneeling, uh, partly because of my knee that really hurts, but I haven't given up the thanksgiving. It's a great thing to do at the end of the day, to look back with thankfulness. You often think I can't find anything but give it a prayerful minute. You'll be surprised what there might be to say thankful, thank you for in your day. We like to do it at mealtimes as a family. So when we say grace, we're receiving food with thanksgiving and we'll often take time to go around the table and say, what else do we want to be thankful for today? Wonderfully encouraging. We can give thanks in the way we talk about things, but thanksgiving is the opposite of these idols. You see, idols want things that we're not supposed to have. Thanksgiving is grateful for the wonderful things that we do have. Partner well, verse seven, don't be partners with those things. Ask dearly loved children and you imitate your heavenly father. Secondly then, plant carefully. The contrast in verses eight to 14 is about fruit. Verse nine, the fruit of light is goodness, righteousness, and truth but have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness. Now, I love this bit, I love this bit, because I want you to think about the moon. Think about the moon for a moment. You'll know in our solar system, we've got the sun, which is a burning hot uh, point of light and heat, but the moon is just a lump of rock. But what happens to the moon when the light shines on it? The moon's a lump of rock, but when the light of the sun shines on the moon, what comes off is beautiful, light. And we who are Christians know that we're really just lumps of rock. We've got no light inside ourselves. There's no hero deep inside ourselves to search for. I've had a look and there's no one there. But when the light of the love of God shines on us, it shines off us. And that's the fruit we bear. So plant carefully. That is, well, look at verse 10. Find out what pleases the Lord. The importance of yours and my lives. There's a line in the show Les Miserables that says our little lives don't count at all, but that's not true. God has put you and I where we are to live with the fruit of light. As lumps of rock on which the light and the love of the sun has shone, we're to reflect that in our everyday lives, in the office, on the dog walk, in the conversations with friends, family, colleagues, and neighbors. There was some research done a number of years ago now by the Church of England on people who'd recently become Christians. And they were asked, what was the most formative influence on that? Now, do you know how many said vicar? Uh, 1%, 1% of people said that the vicar was what made the difference in them becoming a Christian. Do you know well over 60% of people said that it was a godly Christian friend? 
which means that if you're listening into this and you don't get to wear one of these like I do, you're over 60 times more effective as an evangelist and a missionary than I am. Now, I need to do my job just as I know vicars up and down the country do. But if you're sitting in the pew thinking you're powerless and your little life doesn't count at all, not true, not true. As you find out what pleases the Lord and as you live a light, a life of love, as you're a lump of rock that the light of the sun shines off, that makes a real difference in people coming to faith. Over 60 times more effective in evangelism and outreach than I am. Wonderful. So partner well, plant carefully, live out this life of love. And then plan wisely, verse 15. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Why? because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the spirits. Three don'ts there and three alternatives. Don't be unwise, but wise. Don't be foolish, but understand that time is short. Understand what we've been thinking about for the last 10 minutes together. And don't be drunk where you're out of control, but instead be filled with the spirit where you're under God's control. It was W.E. Sangster who used to say, first thing in the day, good morning, Jesus, and what are we going to do together today? That was him trying to be very careful how he lived, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because we're finite beings, with finite time on earth. We get so many days to live. We're to live them for the Lord, so let's live them with wisdom. But what would it look like to be under God's control, filled with his Holy Spirit, rather than out of control, filled with too much alcohol? Well, straight away, Paul gives us five ing words what it looks like to be filled with the Spirit. It's about speaking. It's about singing and musicking. It's about thanking. And it's about submitting. <laughs> it's about speaking singing and musicking, thanking and submitting. Notice first of all the speaking. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Church ministry is not just someone standing at the front teaching the Bible like I am now. Church ministry is that, but it's so much more of that. Church ministry is the Bible being open in our home groups and in our uh, meetings and on a Sunday and then God's people talking about that together. I think one of the reasons that many churches and congregations struggle is they have good faithful Bible teaching just getting the Bible open like we're doing now but then they go and talk about the weather and the grandkids and holidays and those are good things to talk about particularly if you're talking to someone you don't know very well but there's much better things to talk about too. So mature Christians will talk about all those things, but we'll talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll share what's encouraged them from the service that day. Because the Bible says to speak to each other with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Maybe today, share your favourite line from a Christian hymn or song before you leave the building. That will be a great encouragement to someone else. So spirit-filled people are speaking people. They're singing and making music people. And when it's the best way to love our neighbour, and when it's legal within this country, it'd be wonderful to sing again. Not in a way that is careless of other people's concerns. Not in a way that's illegal. But when it's legal, and when it's wise, it'd be wonderful. One of the big pictures of eternity gathered around the throne is singing. Christians are not only speaking to each other people, but we're singing and making music people. We're thanking people. We thought about that earlier in the passage. And we'll see next week that we're submitting people. This again is a part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That in marriages, in parents and children relationships, and in work relationships, Christians recognise God-given patterns and God-given authorities. More of that next time. Andrew Towner, that's me, in himself, just a lump of rock. But the love of the Lord Jesus has shone onto Andrew Towner. I know the love of my heavenly Father. And so Ephesians 5 verse 1 and 2, I long to be an imitator of God, my heavenly Father. I long to follow his example, not so I can get to heaven, but because I've been given heaven. 
and I long to live a life of love just as Christ loved me, not because that way I earn his love, but because that way I respond to his love. That's my prayer for all of us in response to Ephesians 5. Let me pray now. Our Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will help us to partner well and to avoid these idols, but instead be full of thanksgiving. We pray that he will help us to plant carefully, knowing the importance of our lives as a living witness to you. And we pray that he will help us to plan wisely, protect us from being unwise, foolish and drunk, but instead lead us to be wise, understanding and spirit-filled as we live our everyday lives in response to your love. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.